tape player too? Yeah. And this thing, you'd have to pick it up with two hands, you threw it up on your shoulder, and you'd walk down the street like this, right? And you'd be deaf in one ear because, you know, although I guess you get tired, you, you switch it to the other one too, and then you're deaf in this ear. But, but the reality is he had this awesome boom box. And we were coming back from my other friend's house about a half a mile away or so. And as we were coming back from there, well, I think he may have wanted to show off a little bit, you know? So he's like, well, let's go through the apartments or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, I don't think we should. And uh, he said, no, come on, let's go. And so sure enough, he's my friend, right? So we followed along. And uh, sure enough, we come upon some kids playing a, a pickup basketball game. And so we sit down on the bench, and we're watching them. And they got the music going a little bit, and they're liking it too. They're like, yeah, a little Michael Jackson or something, you know? And uh, as that's going on then, uh, you know how like you get those little flags that kind of kind of go up a little bit when something just doesn't seem right well we happened to notice or at least I did on the one hand side a couple benches and around the court there was a guy over there and uh, he was drinking adult beverages and um, so we're sitting there watching the game and I'm kind of keeping my eye while I'm watching I'm listening and I'm also watching back over there and as we started to get up we said you know enough is enough we're going to go ahead and walk back home we had to go around a bayou, so that meant walking one way, a long way, to get around the neighborhood to get back to ours. And so as we got up, he comes over, and I thought, uh-oh, here we go. And so sure enough, he starts asking us all these questions and making this, like, small talk, and, and again, flags are starting to raise. And then the one flag that really just went totally up is when he said, so where do y'all live? I thought, oh, no, this is not going to be good. And sure enough... Without a doubt, then he goes, well, I tell you what, y'all going home, and I'm going to take your box. And I thought, oh, here it goes. And so sure enough, he, he said, no, I'm not going to do that. And he switched his, his arm around, and the guy literally was trying to grab over him, kind of almost wrestling him a little bit. And because there was commotion, the basketball game actually stopped. They came over to see what's going on. I'm like, somebody, somebody help us. And you know how some things happen in your life where you never forget one of the kids' answers was, why should we help you? And I thought, oh, in that instant, we are in major, major trouble. And so sure enough, as they're kind of wrestling about, he kind of throws it to me. It, it kind of hits the dirt. And I grabbed the handle, but it was already too late. The batteries had spilled out all over, and the, um, uh, the back of the plate that held it in was on the ground already, and I'm holding it. And sure enough, as he then finally figures out that he doesn't have any more, he's starting to come towards me, but he kind of stumbled, and that gave us a little bit of space. And so we started kind of taking off and running, and uh, sure enough, we, we kept passing it back and forth. Well, as we're going by, though, I do remember all in that whole same flash, I saw him pick up a rock, because he'd run a little bit with us, but, but you know, we, I was on the outside, John was ahead of me, and, and this guy picks up this rock, and, and I remember that he had in his hand, and as I was running, something hit over here, and something hit a, a light out in the car, because we were running along the parking lot of the thing. And I don't know, I mean, I claim I'll give God all the credit on miracle that somehow he split a rock in two, because all, that's all I saw. But he protected us as we went, and as we ran around the corner, and we ran all the way home. We kept, you know, this box was so heavy, this boom box, and we just kept handing it off to one another, because uh, we had to get home. And I got inside my house, he got inside his house. I don't know what he told his parents, but I told my parents everything. I was so scared. And so here's my question for you. Without saying out loud, don't say it out loud, only in your head, I want you to answer this question. What was the race of the individual that caused evil amongst us? You see, as we start out this talk, as we start out this message, we think about what God has truly done, and therefore, we think about how things have clouded our judgment over time. Sometimes we don't even know it, even though we would say that we're not against a particular type or a person. And so think about this. If we're precious in his sight, look at this real quickly. I know that, um, oops, got to turn on first. Uh, I know that red, yellow, and black and white is the song that we just sang. Well, I got to tell you, this is what my kids and I sing. 
we sing this probably about five, maybe four nights out of the week when we put them to bed. And sometimes it's myself, sometimes it's Sarah, sometimes it's both, sometimes it's our brothers, or the, their, their brothers and sisters that help put them to bed, the littles. And they like to sing the song because we do celebrate all the red, yellow, and black, and white that we have even in our family. But it's a great message because not only do we sing those verses, we actually add verses too. Uh, instead of Jesus loves or died or rose, we also say Jesus cares for the little children. That's what Hope sang last night. I'm like, what are you talking about? We're not singing that one tonight. But we sing it every night and we celebrate the fact that even in our own family as we see it, you know what, we have hair that's different. Some has cor coarse hair, some have um, straight hair, you know, curly hair, all that kind of stuff. Their eyes, right? Some have hazel, some are blue, some are brown. There's probably more out there. I can't remember right now all the eyes that we have in our family. The size is even different, right? Some are short, tall, thin, wide, whatever. It doesn't matter. The reality is God has made us different, and also yet, it's important because he's made us the same. We have the same anatomy. We have, like, you know, legs and arms and a head. We, we have a stomach. We have lungs. We have a heart. You know, God created us really all really the same. The blood is the same too. Now, I, I know, don't get me wrong, I know biology, I know that you can have different types of blood, meaning the positives and negatives and O's and whatever else. I, I get that. But it's true that when we get cut and when we get hurt, we all bleed. It's the same. And so sure enough, the most important one, we're all sinners in need of a Savior. Truly, when we talk about this, we are talking about the same thing. We are, every single one of us, in the same predicament and the same situation. And just as in the story, the true story that I told you at the beginning, just as it is in my house, and just as it is around the world. This is the hard part for us to admit. This is the hard part for us to admit when the law comes down on us and, and we start to acknowledge then finally what's wrong what's what's wrong I, I wouldn't might consider myself a racist I wouldn't consider myself a person who hates others I wouldn't consider myself one who struggles with being kind because normally I, I am but you know what when you peel away that top layer and you start getting down to the root, when you finally figure out what it truly is that's causing it, it's the same for you and me, for everybody. It's the whole issue of pride. You know, some of us would say, well, it's good to have pride in the fact that when you're on a sports team and you're having competition and you want to beat the other team, you take pride in that, right? You, you want to compete. Well, that's good. That's okay. But we're talking about the pride today where we think that we may be just a little bit better than the next person. In fact, some of us might even take on an arrogance. Oh, well, I would never do that. Or I can't believe those or that type of people would do that. Also, and again, this is where you start to study this stuff and you start to look at it. You see what God's word says versus what the world operates in and you start to find out this last one I thought was very interesting. Do you know what? There's this idea of being superior. And you know where that comes from, where it fits in? It fits in with the religion of evolution. It fits in with the idea that there's this belief that we've come from nothing and therefore we're just a bunch of cells, we're a bunch of things that have gone over a lot of time and now we're evolved. And here's the kicker. The belief in evolution says, because if you follow its belief system, if you follow the rules of it, you, you know the things, right? The whole idea that evolution causes the next thing to go into the next. It continues to get bigger, better, stronger because it's survival or of the equal, right? No, it's not equal. Um, uh, survival of the, the weakest, right? Uh, no, no, that's not it either. Hold on. Oh, survival of the fittest. Oh, that's right. So therefore, if you aren't like me, you're less than. And the reality is, is that this is where a sad base of a lot of our population tends to put life in that category. 
you don't really count is what people will say. Now, opposite to that, however, is the good news of Jesus Christ. See, God the Father says, I love all children. And we sing it to our kids, right, with red, yellow, black, and white. We say a fun song so they understand that everybody is welcome in the kingdom. But do we believe it? And so as we ponder this today, I want you to take a look at from what our scriptures have said, because again, with us being in that sinful position of, oh, I have thought I'm better than others. See, the great thing about it is that we have opportunity to say forgiveness because we have a relationship with a father, a father who loves us and really did anything for us. So let's take a look at what happens when instead of the way of the world of evolution and not acknowledging God here in church as a Christian we do acknowledge God and this is what the place is acknowledging our Heavenly Father we find out that parental love can't be earned but given it does not matter whether you are a biological child or an adopted child it's all the same the parents love their children now even as I say that I know that there are some of you out there that have had trouble and issue in your families and I'm very sorry I'm not making light of this at all. I understand that some of you have not had the opportunity to have great parents. My heart hurts for you. But I've got to tell you, even in the midst of suffering and heartache, look at the blue part up here. God loves us more than our parents. God loves us more than we could even fathom of loving our children. So much so that he sent his son Jesus to die for not only you and me, but every single person in the world. There's no one who's left out. It doesn't matter skin color, it doesn't matter the race, it doesn't matter location. For every single person in this world, Jesus was sent. The love can't be earned, but it is given. A lot of times we will talk about it as unconditional love, and it's the best love that there is. Because no matter what happens, that person, that parent always loves us. And God the Father has perfected it. The second thing is children are heirs. You might say, well, that's normal. Of course. Well, as scriptures say that, guess what? We share in all the Father's blessings. We get to receive everything that is good. Just like the prodigal son, the one who stays home, he still always has what the Father has, but the one who goes out and blows everything, when he returns, he still is welcome back. Why? Because he's repented. He's come back. And we're seeing how much God continues to love and care and share, in the, uh, share his blessings with us. Heirs have privileges, by the way. And if you, if you haven't figured this out, this is one of the most awesome things of being a Christian, of being one of God's children. We get forgiveness, eternal life, and the ability to serve. And that's going to be both here and in the future, here and in heaven. We'll continually serve day and night. And the reality is that it'll be a good thing. It'll be a wonderful thing. The idea that we get forgiveness and eternal life because of what Jesus Christ has done in Him alone, oh, it just makes it all the more better. God's children have confidence. This is, the, I believe, the fourth thing on our list here. Jesus' love is always bigger than our mistakes. Today, this hopefully gives you hope and confidence as a child of God, knowing that even though, like, for instance, when we put ourselves above others, when we thought that they're lesser than we are. You know, the idea is that Jesus' love is always bigger than our mistakes. And it gives us confidence to go out and continue to do and hopefully try to be the best that we can. Even though it doesn't earn us anything, we still continue to follow what God has instructed. As a father says to his child, go and do. And in fact, we as children become part of a large family. I know some of you might be uh, uh, single children, in other words, uh, only children in your family. And some of you are like, I don't want a big family, I don't want other people. But the reality is this is a good thing. This is a good thing where brothers and sisters in Christ from all over the whole entire world are praying for you, are caring for you, and are there in time of need. That's what it's about. Brothers and sisters in Christ. And we get to be like Jesus, as the scripture said in 1 John today in the reading. You know what? We're becoming more and more like him every day. 
It's not because we're doing it. It's because Jesus Christ has done it. He suffered on the cross. He's the one who came back from the dead. He's the one who defeated sin, death, and the devil. And now we have the opportunity to live. And so our last thing then, we are numbered with the saints. As today we think about that, that outside of time we can't understand how it works, but in God's ways, we, when we worship, when we sing his praises, when we gather at this table, whether it's walking or, or, or staying here at the railing, you know what? We gather with the saints in heaven and we proclaim the victory in Jesus Christ that he has rescued us 100% one time, once and for all. Today, that is truly great news. And so to close out for the rest of the story, right? Some of you still might be wondering, did you pick the race of the man who did the evil? Well, I'm here to tell you what the answer is. The race of the man is the human race. You see, he's a sinner just like you and me. The only difference is, is that I hope and pray that he became a saint. I hope and pray that he knew the love of Christ. I've never seen that man again. But you know what? We're the ones who do the red, yellow, black, and white. We sing it. We promote it. Because we're teaching children that everybody is welcome. We understand that. But for us as adults, for us that continue to go out and serve our mighty God, the one who did the evil was simply a part of the human race. And therefore, we have a job to do. We have a job to do, and that's to go out and share the love of Christ with everyone we know so that they can celebrate this weekend too. That the day that they leave this earth, and everybody will, you know that. The day that your heart stops beating, the day you take your last breath on this planet is the day you step into eternity. And we want it to be with Jesus. I wish you well as you go out this week sharing the love of Christ, blessing those who you can bless, no matter whether they are red, yellow, black, or white. Amen. And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. This time I invite you now to please stand.